What's up guys? I'm Ben and this is Kame Trick. And on today's video, I'm going to be answering one of the most common questions I get both on my YouTube videos and through DMs on other social media platforms. And that is, I'd like to make a replica of your SIM rig. Can I have the exact dimensions that you used? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna do one better than that. Not only will I give you the exact dimensions that I used, but also I'm gonna walk you through just using a whiteboard every step of the process and give you advice on some things you might wanna do differently to make sure that your rig is custom fit to you and to your gear so that it feels the best that it can be. Stay tuned. Before we begin, I want to welcome any new people to the channel. Thanks for checking it out. On Kame Trick, I bridge the gap between sim drifting and real life drifting. I do both. Also, we have a pretty rad Discord community that is growing every day of drift fans as well as active drifters, either in sim or real life. So check out the channel, check out the links in the video descriptions, and hopefully you'll see something you like and you'll join our community. Additionally, I want to point out that uh, in this video, I'm not going to physically build another one of these rigs. However, I do have a video that covered when I did that. That video doesn't break it down step by step like this one will, but if you check out that video in addition to this one, you should get a pretty complete idea of what this kind of project will look like. So I'm going to place a card in up here. That video will also be down in the description below and I'll put it at the end screen so you can check it out after you finish watching this video. With that said, I'm gonna start by covering the basic components that go into this rig, and then we'll go out to the garage where we've got the whiteboard and we can really get into the details of how to do it and what the dimensions I used were. So to start, you're gonna build a square or a rectangle, and that's what the seat is gonna to mount to. Once you've got the seat mounted to that, you're gonna run a pair of planks out vertically, and that's gonna form the long end of this bigger rectangle that the entire sim rig is all based around. Then you're going to run your horizontal pieces this way up here. That's gonna form your pedal mount. Next, you build what I'm gonna call the table, and that is this piece, these four uprights and these lateral bars here, which is where your wheelbase is gonna mount. And last but not least, you're going to add ledges or shelves for any accoutrements that you wanna mount. So we've got, in my case, a handbrake and a shifter. You might have more that you want to mount. In my case, I didn't know at the time I built this if I was going to be going with VR or triple monitors, so I kept it very basic. One nice thing about wood is that you do have a small ability to add onto it as you go, as long as you don't wanna to make too much of a mess in the uh, room that you've got it stored in. So with that said, let's bounce out to the garage where we've got the whiteboard and I can cover the basic supplies you're gonna to need to get started on this project. Here we are in the Kame Trick Garage. You can see the car behind me waiting patiently as my off season has just begun. All right, so tools that you're gonna to need to do this. First of all, you need a cutting device. It's either gonna be a circular saw like this, or if you have access to what folks commonly call a chop saw, the saw that is on the uh, hinged angle with a little table that you can cut on, that is even better. It's gonna ensure that you get nice, clean 90 degree cuts. These, they only cut as straight as you are able to, so you've gotta take your time, and I know my rig is not completely straight, uh, not completely at 90 degrees everywhere. I've wavered a little bit because I'm not super good at this, but I mean, it's not a problem for what we're gonna be building. Also, if you don't already have one, you might wanna get a nice new blade, and uh, if you're able to, a blade with extra teeth compared to the standard amount for a lumber blade, I think this is a 100 or 120 tooth blade, will produce a finer cut so that you don't have to do as much sanding if you even want to sand it at all. But I wanted a rig that wasn't going to give me crazy splinters when I was moving it. Next up, you need lumber. And the primary type of lumber that we're going to be using for this project is this right here. This is two by four and it comes in eight foot long sections. They are about $5 a piece if you're here in America. That makes up the bulk of what uh, we're building the rig out of. You'll also need one plank of two by six, which is a little bit thicker. It also comes in eight foot planks, or you could get something shorter if you happen to find it at your hardware store. Uh, this is basically just gonna be needed to hold the actual wheelbase because it's gonna be a little thicker and it'll just make everything mount up nicer. You can see I actually cut my three holes in this one and then for some reason didn't end up using it. I must have messed something up. Next you need fasteners. I use these 10 by two and a half, 10 by three wood screws. You could use nails. You could also use uh, wood glue and a fastener like nails or these. 
Uh, I chose to use these and I didn't end up using any wood glue, I just didn't happen to own any. Uh, but I used these because I can take the rig apart if I need to. Now I will say that with the experience of building it, a wooden rig is a little bit more fragile when it comes to taking it apart and reassembling it. So taking apart a single joint to fix it or make a small change is not going to be a problem. However, if you take apart the entire thing thinking that you're going to move and then rebuild it, uh, I don't know how well that will work. You may find that when you take a joint apart and put it back together, it becomes a little weak, and so if you did that to the whole thing, the entire thing might start to flex a little bit. I haven't tried it, so I can't say for sure, but that is one thing to be aware of. Now, you're gonna use the 10 by two and a half when you are putting screws through something like this. When you are putting screws through something like that, use the 10 by three. You could even go bigger if you want to. I didn't think it was necessary. My rig works fine as is. Last but not least, you're going to need clamps of various kinds to hold everything together. Your classic C-clamp is going to be one of your main workhorses. However, I also found these clamps very helpful. This is a clamp for actually joining wood together at a 90 degree angle. Now this cheap small one is made of plastic, but you can get ones that are made of metal that are even better. But basically it's going to let you put a piece of board here and a piece of board here so that you can drive nails or screws into it and it's going to hold it at a pretty close to 90 degree angle, which for me, I was experiencing trouble with that, just doing everything by hand. But uh, a clamp like this really makes it a lot easier to get the job done. That plus a little patience, time, and whatever paint, uh, spray paint or brush paint of your choice is basically all that you need. If I'm forgetting anything, we'll discover it as I go, but I think that's about it. So next we will head over to the whiteboard where we'll look at how to actually build this. I uh, will show you this as well real quick. First, you're gonna build that uh, square that your seat is gonna sit on. And I did not build this square for that purpose. I actually used this uh, just to randomly hold things and it's also what I did all my cutting on because I don't have a good workspace really. I just kind of tossed this together. But you can see one way that you can make these is by running a piece this way and then a long piece that way and just repeating that process around and around. So just the way that it's joined together. It doesn't matter how you do it though. You'll figure it out. That part's not all that hard. Let's get to the whiteboard. Now I don't make a lot of videos like this, so this might be a little dry, but we're just going to get right to it and give you guys the information. So you're going to start by building a box. It is what your seat is going to mount to. And for context, I ended up ultimately carrying out my sim cockpit in this direction. So. That was 19 and a half by 18 and three quarter inches. I'll also put uh, metric sizes in there for all of my international peeps. And it was built out of two by four. In fact, everything is built out of two by four unless I say otherwise. So this is a top view. Here's a side view. There was nothing to it. Uh, because it was two by four, it was three and a half inches tall. Next, I added two uh, seat rail runners, we'll call them, and they were just a piece of two by four that was cut going that way, like so, and sitting onto the top. That gave me room to actually mount the seat rails on top of them like this, so then the seat rails sat on top, and then the seat, of course, mounted to the rails like that. And that was how we got the seat mounted. Uh, those were also 18.75 inches long, same as the rest of the box. Next up, we built what I'm gonna call the main box around the seat box, and that is the actual outer dimensions of my sim rig as you see it now. And so how we did that was we added a two by four to either side, like so. This was a very simple measurement. I just took one of those boards and cut it in half. So they're eight feet long, which means that each of these is 48 inches long. 
And so what we end up with now is this. Now right away we're onto a couple of areas where you might want to do something different with your rig. First of all, you don't have to build a seat box and then make another box around it. You could have made these pieces longer and then still put your runners on top, these seat rail runners on top, and that would have resulted in less pieces of wood, it would have been a lighter piece overall. But uh, I just didn't think of it honestly at the time when I was building it. Um, additionally, your seat box itself, its dimensions are going to be determined by the size of your seat and your seat uh, rails. So I wouldn't copy my size, I would basically go off of your size. Put the seat bracket or the seat rails onto the seat, measure that, and then figure out where you want to uh, go as far as getting everything for that seat box. This part being four feet or 48 inches long, you can absolutely copy that because unless you're incredibly short or incredibly tall, I'm 5'10", then that's gonna fit you with plenty of leeway. So at this point in my rig, by adding these long pieces on, we had increased the length here to 22 and a half inches, and the uh, length of these is of course now 48. Next, you're going to sit in your seat, extend your feet out, and see where you would like your pedals to be. Actually take the pedals themselves and set them in between these, that's one other consideration. You want to make sure that the width of your seat box will fit not only your seat, but also your pedals. I don't think it'll be an issue, but it's possible. I did use floor mounted pedals. If you have hung pedals, you're going to have to figure out how to hang them, but just make sure that they fit in between here. And then once you've got the spacing from here that you like, you're going to add uh, one or two. In my case, it was two pieces of two by four like this, which is gonna form the mount for the pedals. So the pedals actually get bolted down like that. And then the pedal box is gonna sit here. You know, something like that. These went on the inside, so they were 20 inches from here to here. At this point, the basic structure for the rig is completed. So you're gonna have your main piece, and your seat's gonna sit on there, something like that. The next thing that you're gonna do is build what I'm calling the table, and that's gonna be your uprights here, which will actually hold your wheelbase. And so I start with the verticals. We'll go ahead and get a top view going here as well. So I start with the verticals. Those go on the inside in my rig of these long pieces here. And so they come up like so. And then I added another one back here. I sat in the seat, I held my arms out and envisioned where roughly height wise and like how far away from my body I wanted the wheel. And then uh, based on that, I put in these vertical pieces with a little bit of extra room. I plan to cut them down later. Then I had a friend come over and help me. He actually held my wheelbase on a piece of two by six. So that's the next thing you need to do is you need to make a mount for your two by six. We'll come back to the height of these here in a second. So basically you're gonna get a piece of two by six. This is the top view. And you're going to use your uh, wheels mounting gear or really good luck to figure out you know, where to put your holes, drill your holes, and then you're gonna affix your wheelbase to this two by six. Now your friend can take this, you're gonna cut it to the distance here, which in my case, the distance here was 23 inches, so that would be this distance. Then you have, you sit in the seat, you have a friend hold the wheelbase and you're going to position it and get the right angle. So in my case, it wasn't much above flat, but all steering wheels do come out of the car like this as the uh, steering column is going down towards the front steering gear, which is down at the bottom area on the front of the car. So once you know what that is, you are gonna mark that on here, on this front upright. You're not really gonna mount it though, you're just gonna leave it, because then, this is a little complicated, you go in and you put in your uh, horizontal supports and those go on the inside of these so you're going to end up putting a piece 
in here and putting a piece in here. Now this does make it a little tighter on the inside of the uh, rig, but the reason that you're doing that is because you're actually creating a shelf that this piece will sit on top of. So that way it's not just the screws that are holding it to the uprights vertically like this. All the weight isn't just on the screws. It's actually this entire piece of wood and the weight of the wheel and all of your force feedback are pushing down onto this piece right here. And it's gonna make it a lot more sturdy and give you some fallback in case anything breaks. You're not gonna have your wheel fall off. You'll feel the rig get really unstable before that happens. I haven't had any such problem, but it's uh, cheap insurance. So that's the way I like to build it. Also, I can tell you I had plenty of room for my feet in here. Uh, it's a little difficult to get in and out of the rig, but so is getting in and out of a real caged race car. So I think that we just need to suck that one up because this is super cheap and it's a good project. Once you have this piece in, you can go ahead and mount your two by six piece. So I will draw that in there. So the two by six piece came in like that. And then this is the point where you can come in with your uh, sawzall. I ended up taking my wheel off to where it was just a piece of wood so that I'd keep everything pretty. And I came in and cut these pieces out. So that went away and that went away. And we finished looking like this. And now I can tell you my finished dimensions. This front support, I just left this entire thing going at the angle that I wanted the steering wheel to go in the first place is 19 inches tall and this longer piece is 22 inches tall and again that's from floor up and floor up so now you've got your wheelbase here on a two by six and everything is done for the table That's got your basic rig ready to go. You've got your seat, you've got your steering wheel, and then you've got your pedal block, which is in here as we described previously. So you're basically done with all your essentials. Next, we're going to move on and look at any uh, accoutrements you want to include, which in my case was an e-brake shelf, which went here, and a shifter box, which went here. Next up is the e-brake shelf. This was very simple. I just took two pieces of two by four, like so. They were uh, eight and a half inches tall. And then I laid a piece of two by four on top of them that was 16 and three quarter inches uh, long. And so basically these two pieces just bolted right up to here, like this. And then the horizontal piece sat directly on top of them. A key point about mounting for your uh, wheel, your e-brake, and your shifter, you need to leave the area here unrestricted because when you put your e-brake or shifter box or whatever it's gonna be here, you need the ability to get screws to go up in here from the underside to secure it. And one other thing that you'll need to do because it's wood, you will need to go to the hardware store and probably buy longer hardware than what came with your rig because typically these are gonna mount to a piece of metal and metal is very strong, it can be very thin, but for wood, you're gonna end up using a larger piece. So all that I did was I took my original hardware to the store, used the uh, little gauges that they have there, they're free to match up the thread pitch. If you don't know how to do that, just ask an associate for help and then make sure that you get something long enough to go through the wood and get up into your piece of gear uh, as much as you want. I go for the most thread engagement possible. So mine run up in here really far. And last is the shifter shelf. So what I wanted to do, and this might've been overkill, but I wanted to run a piece out this way first. And that was a little difficult because your shifter, I'll just draw a little shifter over here, your shifter, you need to leave this area free so that you can run your mounting screws in. So I ran a piece of uh, two by four vertically here. 
And then on top of that, I put a piece of two by six going this way. And that's what my screws went into like so. So I left the underside free. And now we'll take a slightly closer look at that. Here, you've got this long vertical piece. And first I ran this thin piece out like so. And I secured it from way over there with those long screws that I was talking about. This piece was eight inches long. Next, I put a, uh, an end piece on that was two by six. Then I covered this with a horizontal piece, which went like that. This was also a two by six, and it, from here to here, is 11 inches long. Overall, the height for this red piece was 5.5 inches. So if we wanna try and make this 3D, we would end up with something like this. So this red piece is 5.5 inches tall. This piece is 11 by however wide a two by six is that I'll add in. And uh, then this small piece that's hidden underneath was eight inches long. And so then for me, that sat over here. So this piece went here. It had an end cap on it as well. And then the top simply covered that up. And that way the shifter could go on top of it. And then of course the e-brake goes there and that covers it. Things you'll wanna keep in mind specific to your build is first of all, do you want an OEM style lift up e-brake or do you want the kind that mounts up near the steering wheel in a vertical orientation that you pull back? For me personally, I have the lift up style of e-brake and I like the lift up style better. It's just got a retro feel, which I kind of dig. Uh, and a random fact, when you pull this, if you don't have good seat belts, which I do now, but I didn't always, it pulls you down into the seat. When you pull this, it pulls you up out of the seat. So I think that you have superior control if you have no bucket seat, or if you have basically poor restraints, a poor harness system, then a lift up style is actually going to help you stay seated in the car better, whereas a pull out style will actually pull you up out of the seat and it'll make you strain to uh, stay in the seat and it'll mess up how well you can drive just a little bit. That, my friends, takes care of it. And that brings us back to the completed piece. I realized as I was walking in from the garage, I was talking about the e-brake with this stock style pulling you into the seat and uh, in a sim you don't have g-forces. That's just my real life experience talking, but it's an interesting point. I just want you to simulate the kind of car you want to drive in real life and then hopefully have the opportunity to when you build the skills. So to conclude, you're going to build your seat, sit in it, use your foot positioning in the seat to mount your pedal box, put your feet on the pedals, then you're going to use that to determine what feels best for your steering wheel. Mount the wheel to a horizontal piece, have a friend hold it in between these uprights, and then when you've got it in the right spot, have your friend mark where to put these upright or these uh, horizontal pieces, mount all that together, then use your hands on the wheel to go back and forth to the shifter and figure out what feels good on the shifter and do the same to get your e-brake positioning. That way you'll have a sim rig that's perfect for you and not just a generic replica of this one. Now if you don't have a real life car to compare it to, by all means use my, uh, my measurements and hopefully it'll be a good start for an S13 type of feel, assuming that you do have the same hardware as me. If you have different SIM hardware, honestly, all bets are off, and that's why you need to use your own body one step at a time, seat, pedals, wheel, e-brake, and shifter, to figure that out. If you are not the kind of person who understands blueprints really easily, then check out the video. I'm gonna drop it in a card, the description, and the end screen of this clip and it will show you me building this. It doesn't go every single step, but you can understand some of the more complex features just by watching the build come together for things like this shifter shelf. And last but not least, if this video helped, give it a like, 
Uh, let me know with a comment down below. If you build your own rig, tag me on social. I'll try to check it out if I see the notification. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you're down with this kind of content, please subscribe, and I hope to see you on my next uh, live stream and in the comments on my next video. Have a good night, guys. Peace.